Did I speak up? Hello, everyone. Trudy, look at you. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to tonight's show, The Healthy Entrepreneur. My name is Maxine Choi, and this show happens every Tuesday at 7 o'clock on the Facebook page of Business Takeout. So if you want to head over there right now, please like and share as we're going to begin to have a wonderful conversation with the lovely Trudy German. And <laughs> so before we begin, I would like to tell you what the Business Takeout page is all about. So the Business Takeout is a show that seeks to gain insight on the health and wellness journey of entrepreneurs. What we do is we talk about our own experiences as well as what we have to do on a daily basis in order to maintain our health and our well-being. Because as we know, as entrepreneurs, we tend to chase a lot of things like success, money, whatever it is that we need to do so that we can survive. But in the process, what we sometimes do is we neglect our health. And that's become a huge, huge issue for many people who are trying to succeed, trying to stay motivated, and really trying to find that balance between work, life, kids, and being an entrepreneur. So this show is designed to help us and ourselves as well, you, to figure out ways how you can manage this and maintain a routine for yourself. So um, without further ado, I have my lovely host, Trudy German, who is the owner of Body Envy, and I'm going to leave you with the time right now to introduce yourself to the audience. Maxine, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I Hi, you. My, don't mind me while I share this on Facebook, but um, <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Trudy German, I'm a certified personal trainer and owner of Body Envy, and I work with women over 40 to have them looking good, feeling good, losing fat, and keeping it off. Not just losing it, but how to also keep it off. And I'm based in Toronto. And that I see, I like that. I like how you say not just losing it, but taking it off, right? And I'm trying to share this video, if I could just get to it. Just <laughs> it happens all the time, right? That's what makes it so much fun, right? We're, we're all, when you have live stuff going on, that's what happens. So I'm gonna try and see if I can share this video. Please help me out as I get there because I have to, oh, here we go, here we go. I shared it. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get started because you and I have had many conversations in the past. And uh, like you, we're both in kind of like the same industry because you focus on fitness and wellness, as in like nutrition, mindset, and you have personal training, you do personal training for clients. And I focus on the health and wellness and nutrition and fitness slash yoga all that stuff that I incorporate. So I think the two of us, we gel together, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I definitely feel you on in every level with how your mind thinks and how mine thinks as well as an entrepreneur and as a woman, you know, in, in where we, we really, really have to take care of ourselves. We really have to find ways. We really have to make sure that this, this whole, this body comes first. And we're talking sleeping, the way we eat, how we think about ourselves, what we do on a daily basis, our self-care routine, all these things that is so important for us. So when we were talking, we talked about entrepreneurs and chasing the money, but in the process, they they do not, they neglect their health. So why do you think that's true? And if so, why do you think that's true? And I think that's true. And it's, I don't, I think it's true to an extent. And I also think it's, not something that they do intentionally. Because I don't think most of us really think about our health until we become sick, right? So we take it for granted. We take walking up the stairs for granted. We take waking up. We take all those things for granted. So because we're taking those things for granted, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially the newer entrepreneurs, you know, they're never thinking about exercise. I don't have time to exercise. That half an hour I'm exercising, I could have been using that time to make money, which, you know, if you have a business that what you want to do, you want to make money, which is important. And also, you know, the late nights, we're in a culture where team no sleep is a thing these days, but it's like, ah, we need sleep. It's not a luxury. And 
I think that a lot of entrepreneurs don't really think about that. It's not something like, oh, my health is important, but the money is first. It's not something that they really think about. It's just how, especially new, being a new entrepreneur. It's like, how am I gonna pay the bills? How am I gonna get the next client? How am I, it's always about the money because, you know, money determines success and you start a business because you wanna become successful. And plus you need the money because you're not getting a regular paycheck, right? So you are going to be taking exactly. money. Exactly. I, I have been guilty myself of the all night, um, you know, working all night till 4 a.m. in the morning, you know, working. I think we all have. And, and especially when we're younger, we kind of like, it's easier to do because we don't feel the effects as much. Yeah. But once we get to a certain age, it's like, whether we like it or not, the body tells us, right? And especially... Now we're being inundated with the hustle mentality on the social media, hustle, 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 making it seem as if, if you rest, you're gonna lose the next opportunity. If you mm -hmm. rest, you're doing nothing. And I know for me, like Sundays are kind of like my wind down days. And I used to be like, I do nothing on Sundays, but then I realized, no, 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 girl, you rested. That is something because that's going to make you more productive in the weeks to come. So I think a lot of us, um, you know, and we've all done this at some point because being healthy and fit, it's not just about the physical part, right? It's also what's happening inside. Right. How do you feel about yourself? A lot of us don't are really confident when we start our businesses. It's the negative self-talk. You know, I'm sure we've all seen those quotes that, you are your worst enemy. <laughs> it's like, you know, if 10 people tell us that something is right, we're gonna convince ourselves. And it's like that negative talk also does affect us. And yeah, and of course the caffeine. We live on caffeine and I'm guilty of it because I love my caffeine. <laughs> I drink two cups a day, sometimes more, but I find a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't drink enough water. They're not eating properly because it's, once again, that hustle mentality. Got to stay awake. Got to be on it. You know, I'm saying this and I'm thinking about that scene in, I forgot that movie. It'll come back to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Where it was on Wall Street and the guys never sleep. They just go, go, go. And a lot of us think that's what being an entrepreneur is. But I always say to my entrepreneur clients and friends, all right, so you don't take care of your health and you start making all that money. How are you going to enjoy it if you're constantly sick? How are you going to enjoy it if you're in, in hospital or, you know, if you're sick and you can't do anything with your family? And I find when I put it like that, it does give them a wake up call. And also if you're sick, who's gonna run the business that you sacrifice your health for? Exactly. You know, it brought me back to a story of um, this man I worked with when I was in corporate and he, all his life, he worked really, really hard just to make the business successful. And when he hit retirement, he went for a doctor's appointment and sure enough, he had a really bad health scare and it, it ultimately took his life. But in hindsight, he regrets not taking care of himself all those years because he wanted to chase the money. So that was a wake up call for me as well, even though, you know, I know I take care of myself, but it could happen anyway. Right. But it just it goes to show you that even if you do the little bit that you can every day to take care of yourself, at least you're, you know, you're, you're making some kind of um, improvement to your life or you're trying to just be healthy, right? At least try to be healthy as, as best as you can. <clears throat> My voice is getting raspy. But um, I do, I, I did really, I, I related to some of the things you were saying because I know that I was guilty of them. And just- I think we all were at a certain point, right? right. And I've read a lot of books where a lot of entrepreneurs, even um, Ariana Huffington of Huffington Post, she passed out once from not getting enough sleep right so many people has burned out because so many entrepreneurs have burned out because they neglect their health and they just keep their foot is constantly on the gas to grow the business to make the money to grow the business to make the money to grow the business right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as i said i don't think it's something entrepreneurs think about consciously it's just something that's kind of out of sight out of mind thing. i mean i think a lot of it had to do has to do with 
I think that there's stress that comes with the being an entrepreneur, right? And the stress of either losing a client or not being able to get a client or um, having to um, make the money. So you you lay at night and you start thinking about all the things you want to do with the business and all the opportunities that you want to take advantage of and all the things you want to be involved in. And it takes over. It takes over. It takes a toll on you. So you, you become very tired, stressed out. And sometimes that can cause you to lose um, insight on what you're eating. You start to eat out to grab a quick bite because you're on the run. Um, you don't prepare a healthy meal because you don't have the time to go grocery shopping to even plan your dinner. So a lot of it has to do with stress. And, you know, it's, it's a known fact that when you become an entrepreneur, you are the CEO, the president, the secretary, the bank, the bookkeeper. For everything. For everything, right? So <laughs> it, it, it definitely is a, a real struggle. And we're here to um, on this show to help entrepreneurs um, realize how important it is. Because like you said, if you get sick, who's going to run the business, right? And not only that, there's nothing like looking at somebody who's an entrepreneur and maybe they're supposed to inspire you or... Um, sell something to you and you're looking at them thinking you don't look healthy not to me right i'm i notice that with people when i look at you no matter even if you're selling me a vacuum i'm checking you out and i'm just like um you <laughs> you for yourself so how are you going to care about what you're selling me yeah like it's just weird how i think but anyway we'll go on because we could i'll go on to the next question because we could talk about this forever so of course I see you on Instagram with that body. <laughs> and, you know, people see you, they're probably thinking, this girl is full of energy. Like, how do you do it? So my question is, I'm sure you have days when you don't feel like doing anything. How do you do it? Prime example, yesterday was one of those days, <laughs> November 30th. I don't know if it was the rain in Toronto. I don't know what it was, but mm -hmm. it was, I usually work out at around, mid-morning by 11 a 10 11 a.m and it's just that when that time rolled around it was like i was an entrepreneur it was the end of the month i had to run my numbers um i had to send out invoices i had all these entrepreneurial stuff to do where it's like okay another 15 minutes another 15 minutes another 15 minutes to the point where it was about three o'clock <laughs> oh, wow and even then to be honest i really and truly did not be like doing it and in my facebook group with my clients that i that i coach there i shared that with them because as you said people may see you know think see me and think that because this is my job that i always feel like doing it but no and it was the reason it got done was i knew that once i got it out of the way i'm gonna have more energy to get through the rest of the day that was the only thing the only reason that got me to work out yesterday. So for me, it's no longer about, oh, the biceps or the exterior. That's still important. Don't get it twisted. It's still important. I still like my abs and my arms. <laughs> but I also think about the fact that I'm going to feel more energized to handle the rest of my day. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's what I have to do because it's not every day I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to work out. Today was one of those days, but yesterday wasn't. So what I always, something I also coach my clients through is, you know, be very, very careful and uh, honest with your reason for wanting to work out. If you want to work out because you like the way you look, be honest with it. And when you don't feel about it, think about that. Okay, if you miss this workout, how are you going to look? Because you can lie to everyone else, but you can't lie to yourself, right? And if you lie to yourself, you're gonna be cheating yourself. Mm -hmm. So I just think about the energy that I'm really and truly gonna have after, and I get it done. I get that because um, there are times when I don't feel like doing anything myself. And when people ask me like, how do I do it? Well, I think I do it because I know how I feel afterwards. Mm -hmm. I feel this rush of adrenaline. It makes me um, focus. It keeps me, it just makes my body feel more loose and limber. And um, that's what makes me do it. So if anybody here is watching and you're wondering, you know, how do I get motivated? How do I do this? Just think about what the body is, how the body is responding to this, right? Because your body is not going to be responding to anything that you put to it or give or whatever, right? It's going to respond. And hopefully it's in a positive way. 
right? Not negative. And movement. I always say this, our bodies are meant to move. Like when you start moving, you automatically feel better. You can, you're never moving and you still feel crappy. So just get up and start moving and you'll notice the difference. Right. Okay. So, um, so I was saying this to you earlier. <laughs> you're a personal trainer, trainer with the, you know, the steam fish and okra body. <laughs> Because when I look at you, I'm just like, damn, this girl has abs. You have abs. <laughs> don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> it's my dream is to get abs. Um, so what's your typical day, Trudy? What's your typical day? Because remember, what we put out on Facebook or Instagram or whatever is what people see. So I, my vision of you is that you get up and you're just like working out all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one. No, I know. <laughs> so I'm usually up at 4 a.m. I'm an early bird. <laughs> so by 4 a.m. I'm usually awake. Um, and I'm at least I'm up at least two hours before I go on any social media platform. It took a while to get there, and part of the reason is I think I realized that. Going on any social media platform, Instagram, Facebook, as much as I love interacting on them, I'm starting my day taking on everyone else's energy. And I don't, I didn't want to, I didn't like how I feel doing that. So the first two hours of my day, I'm pouring into me. That could be um, you know, meditating, fasting, sometimes listening to something positive, something spiritual, reading the Bible. I love TD Jakes in the morning. And sometimes I'll just lay in bed and listen. For, for about that time, for about 45 minutes to an hour, then get up, read my Bible, um, do a five minute stretch, you know, because I love how my body feels when I start with you know, a movement. I used to love a 5 a.m. workouts, but for some reason, <laughs> my body's like, nah, boo. Yeah. We're we going to do this meditating and journaling and all these non movement stuff first. And then, um, you know, there's water and then coffee. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, um, so I like I like the fact that you said that you give yourself two hours. That's pretty good because for for the most part, I I want to give myself two hours, but I give myself about an hour maybe, depending on how tired I am. So two hours is pretty good because you can use one hour for like your meditation and stretching or working out. And the other one for like reading or watching something inspirational. So, I mean, I think that's a, a perfect balance for, for you to start your day. So the two hours came into place during COVID. It was an hour before. <laughs> okay. Okay. It was an hour before. And I don't remember how I started the two hours. And I just realized, oh, I like this. I no longer feel as if I'm rushing, rushing. right? Yes. Um, and I find... You know, when people are like, oh, that's long. Here's the thing. You pour into you what time you think you need. And yeah, you do it. Yeah. Don't try to pour two hours or 90 minutes if that's not conducive, if that's not realistic. And I didn't start here. I started with 15 minutes. And then once I mastered that, I started adding more things to it, right? So right. It's, it's a... As I like to say, there's levels to this school, like there's levels. So you kind of slowly integrate. And for me, pouring into myself is very important because regardless of what you do, you're interacting with people at some point throughout the day. You are taking on their energy or giving them your energy. So if you're not grounded in your energy, you know, you can be taking on people's crap and not know how to deal with it. And that happens sometimes. Oh. Right, right. Um, and then a nap. I take a nap every day. Good for you. I got my nap. 10 a.m. It's nap time. <laughs> Good for you. Because I get up so early, like yeah. I can't function come 4 or 5 p.m. with my evening clients if I haven't had a nap. And that's something that I realized I enjoy. Like, yeah. yes, I'm over 40 and I nap. I love it. What's your yeah. problem? <laughs> you. And nothing you? is good for us, right? 10 no. to 10 minutes really wakes us up, gives yes. us energy. It does. And, you know, uh, listening to you talking about the two hours that you give yourself and even just your nap, 
you know I'm going to take your advice because I'm going to start. So, I mean, I usually get up at 6, no, 6.30 every morning. And by the time I roll out of bed and get on my mat, it's about 7.30. Um, mm-hmm. And that's a way to go to bed, Maxine, because that's another thing. We want to get up earlier, but we don't want to go to bed earlier. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> if you want to get up, I will say this. If you want to get up earlier, you got to start going to bed earlier. It doesn't have to be an hour, just like 15 minutes earlier each week, and you'll notice the difference. I've been trying. I've been trying. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I think that's a great um, tip for entrepreneurs. Uh, maybe try and go to bed a little bit earlier and then seeing if you can wake up an hour early. Even just give yourself an hour. And it's a start. It's you know? half an hour, 15 minutes to start. Mm-hmm. 15 minutes. Yeah, and I realized... Changing change is hard at first, but once you start it and you see the positive effect it has on you, you start making it a part of your lifestyle. Right? Absolutely, for sure. And change is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, clients who make excuses, right? What is a typical excuse that you find, especially with COVID? Because there should be, as far as I'm concerned, there should be no excuse. But here's the thing. There should be no excuses. And I understand some of their reasoning. I won't say excuse. I understand some of their reasoning because a lot of them, my clients are women. So a lot of women are working from home. So while they're home, they're employee, they may be manager, a manager, supervisors. Um, they, they're also moms. Right. They're also teachers. <laughs> they're also principal. Right. right. So trying to juggle everything throughout the day with everyone home, being home, that can be a challenge for some people. So not not everyone is home and really have all the time. It's even harder because now everyone's home, you know, trying to make it work can be a challenge. Right. I would say in general, the biggest excuse I've heard is don't have time. Yes. Yes. Don't have time. That is the biggest one because they're working with me, so they can't say, "I don't know what to do." Because in my online program, they're given everything to do. It's up to them to do it, right? It's kind of like when you go to college or university, all the materials there, but you still got to put in the work. Yes. Right. So whenever I hear, "I don't have time," I'm like, "Okay, let's grab a pen and paper." Let's right. work on your schedule. And it's it's not a matter of they don't have the time. It's not a priority. Mm. Yes. yes. You're they right. They don't have the time because when we go through their schedule, a good four to six hours a week is spent right. watching the reality show and all of that. And that's fine. We all need to turn off. We all need an oasis. Right. But I'm like, you know, we can cut that in half. And then that's when I realized, even though they say they don't have the time, they started a new job, this is happening. It's mm-hmm. just not a priority because they're making time for everything else. Everything and else except when, Exactly. Time. When right. something is a priority, we're going to make time for it. Absolutely. I did see a comment on um, that popped up. Somebody made a comment. Um, okay, so it says, Facebook user, I used to see health as something to do once I got the business in line. With limited time, it was hard to fit in. It wasn't until I made it a priority that I made time. There you go. What you just said, right? So um, in, in English, Forbes says, entrepreneurs, entrepreneur business open are open 24 seven. Oh yeah, definitely. See, I, I don't agree with that <laughs> um, to an extent. Right. Even if you're the only person there, you also need boundaries. You also need to fill your cup. So if if you have a team that's able to help others and everyone's, you know, has designated role, that's fine. But if you're the only one, you cannot be on 24 7 That is not healthy. That is not sustainable. Because when do you fill your cup up? When do you sleep? When do you replenish so you can serve your business and your customers and your clients better? That's right? it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> you make me feel like I should go to bed now. Like, I completely get it. And I remember one of the best advices someone gave me when, um, when, I, when I was new in entrepreneur in the entrepreneur world. He was like, 
Choose one day where it's just you. One day where your clients can't get a hold of you. And I was like, it took a while for that to wrap around, but then I also realized it's it's needed. You need a day where it's just to unwind, where you can even plan, because you can't. We can't be on twenty four seven. It's not healthy. It's not sustainable, right? I've done that actually. I've I've not responded to anybody all day because I needed it. Um, so yeah, that's a very good tip for sure for entrepreneurs. Make it a day where your clients, if you don't contact them, they you know you can always contact reply, reply to them the next day. Exactly. Or it's not going to end. <laughs> Okay, um, so, you know, habits. We all have habits. Everybody has habits, whether they're good or bad, all right? And before we, I don't want to get really too much into it because um, there's just so many different levels of habits and the, the degree in which they can either be a positive or a negative in your life. So I want you to tell me, what you, do you have a bad habit? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> What do we consider a bad habit, Maxine? <laughs> well, I mean, I assume that you have good habits because I know that you're very disciplined with your sleep and your time and your space and your workout. So those are good habits. And those good habits, let's hope that they translate to your better good and not habits that are facilitating somebody else's good that's draining you. So we have bad habits. Um so English Forbes entrepreneurs see it as they, they, that way. Yeah, I know it's not healthy, but they see it that way. Yeah, you're right. They do. Thanks, English Forbes. Um, so I have a bad habit. So tell me your oh, bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the questions been turned around now. Okay. So I have a bad habit of not sticking to my plan. So, okay. I'm trying to go plant-based trying and i do my meal prep or my meal plan and i buy my groceries according to what i want but i do have a daughter so every once in a while when i make her something for some reason i i'll try something that she i made for her and it wasn't a part of my plan right so i keep i know i can do it but the habit i have is not being able to be disciplined enough to say no I need to learn that. I think that's a bad habit of just not sticking to my plan. Uh. <laughs> Come on now. I want to hear yours. <laughs> so one of my bad habits I've been told is when I decide that I need my space, <laughs> if there's an emergency, no one can get a hold of me. It's oh. just like the phone's off. <laughs> yeah, you do <laughs> me. <laughs> The phones are, for example, my phone automatically goes on do not disturb at around 9 p.m. most nights and very few people can get in after 10. Um, <laughs> so that's what I've been told about. <laughs> that, that's one of my selfish ways. And I'm trying to work on it, but at the same time, I think the people closest to me now, they realize that it is what it is, but if there's an emergency, as soon as I'm available, I'll I'll get back to them. And especially more these days, I'm noticing I'm more on this spiritual journey where I'm getting closer to God. So I'm fasting more. So sometimes when I'm fasting, they don't even know it. And I'll just go MIA and I'll be like, hey, I'll hit you up in a few days. Is this urgent? But Sometimes when you're, go, when you're growing, people think you're stepping away from them. It's not a matter of you're stepping away from them. You're just stepping into where you need to be. And yeah. since COVID, I noticed I've really, really been going through that. Like Sundays, yes. off, rarely. I need that because I realize when I'm always on go, and I was one of those entrepreneurs, you know, not dating, not doing anything. Oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Work, it was always work. But it's like, okay, so you set this goal, you got there. You set this goal, you got there. Who you have to celebrate it with, right? Mm -hmm. Going, going, going. And I realized work was an excuse. It was the fear of opening up. So, um, so some of the entrepreneurs, you know, when I hear entrepreneurs say, Oh, I'm always working. 
it's like, boo, what are you running from? You're using work, <laughs> right? Because if you're always working, you're, you're kind of running from somewhere. It's not just growing the business. Anyway, I'm going somewhere else with this. <laughs> but yeah, one of mine is, uh, um, you know, Opening up more and uh, when it's me time, it's just like, it's me time. I, I kinda, it's so in other words, your, your, your bad habit is just basically shutting people off at times when they possibly could need you and you're trying to work on that. Well, okay. Well, not really need me. <laughs> want you. <laughs> want me. But you know, if they really need me, I'll drop everything, but it's just like, you're calling to check in if I'm good. I'm right. good. You're good. You're good. But it's like, oh, there's an emergency. I need you. Okay. That's kind right. of different. But I can see that we're past 7 30, but that's okay. Oh. The producer will tell me. She, I'm gonna she, I'm letting her know she can text me if she need, if I need to jump off because I do want to ask you some more questions. Um, just two more, and they're very they're very quick. Um so 2020. <laughs> 2020, I, I, I don't even have any more words for 2020. I don't, I, I literally, I'm mute right now. And all I can think about is what the heck is going to happen for 2021? And I can't, like you said, we can't predict the future. I don't know what's gonna happen. None of us saw all of this coming. This wasn't on anyone's radar board or plan. <laughs> so everybody, you know, a lot of people have pivoted that word and they have gone either online or incognito or whatever the case may be or and then they're and they're now people are evolving and trying to figure out what's next what's next for them right because we're going to have a whole different dynamic when it comes to our business um in 2021 especially if you're online or even if you were not online prior to 20 to covid right so what's what's next for you like how do you see 2021 for your business? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, well, of course, I definitely want to continue to help women um, yeah. live healthier and happier. I just want to, I just want to help more women because I, I'm oh, realizing yeah. that even with client, current conversations with women and other clients, right. For some reason, we don't feel that we deserve to look good. Like, right. you know, it's all my most of my clients now are over 40. I have some over 50, and they're like, you know, this is my time to start taking care of me. It's the children are grown. I've always wanted to do this. But that's that's something I'm really passionate about and it's gonna go deeper into helping women to own their sexy. You know, everybody want to be sexy, so I want to help them own their sexy. <laughs> and your plans are to continue to help women um, take care, of, take charge of their bodies, own their sexy. Exactly. Ramp it up a little bit. Good for exactly. you. Good for you. Okay. Um, so, Trudy. <laughs> Maxine, I don't like all that song, you know. <laughs> one morning, one morning when I woke up, 20 minutes before, I opened up my Instagram, which I shouldn't have. And I went to my stories and I clicked on yours. <laughs> <laughs> and what I got was the signature greeting that you always do. I swear. I don't <laughs> and you know what the joke is? People think that's a facade. My friends can tell you that is not because when they call, good morning, they're like, if they're like, I see somebody had their coffee, even my brother. My brothers know whenever I call, do not have the phone next to their ear because they're gonna have to move because I'm gonna scream. <laughs> right, right. So, um, I want you to give me give me a good morning. At 7.35, Maxine? Give me a good evening. <laughs> okay. And that laugh. <laughs> so give me a good morning. Give the audience a good morning. All right. And then you have to promise that you gotta do a story tomorrow that says it. I gotta have the cup. Yes. Good morning! <laughs> I swear. You know, I don't know if you have somebody there with you. 
but you sure will wake up the house. <laughs> I'm sure my neighbors hear me in the mornings. Mornings, my favorite time of day. I love mornings because I go to bed early, so I get up, I'm full of energy. Come 5 p.m., <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Make this quick. <laughs> Oh wow! Um, oh, English is awake. <laughs> well, that is my plan. Okay. Well, Trudy, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, and um, I want to thank the audience for um, listening. And I hope that we have managed to inspire somebody <laughs> in finding ways to you know, get up in the morning earlier and do something for yourself, work out, do whatever, right? And um, in order for everyone to reach you, your Instagram handle and everywhere, can you let us know what they are? Instagram, bodyenvy1, and my website is bodyenvy.ca. Awesome. <laughs> well, so thank you very much, Trudy. Thank and you so much for having me, Maxine. Oh, you're welcome. And I want you to say good night in that voice, please. <laughs> Maxine! <laughs> Come on. I'll say it with you. Can I say good night in it? I've never done it. Okay, hold on. We'll say it together on the count of three. So, three. so I'll first, I'll thank you everyone for watching. <laughs> now we're going to say good night. Ready? One, yes. two, three. Good night! <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Maxine! Oh, wait, we're still alive. <laughs> 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 Thank you, <Maxine. laughs>